There is a Jewish saying that silence is better than speech, but song is better than silence. And we use that saying when we are trying to express how to respond to trauma and sadness and hardship and a moment in our lives that feels incomprehensible. Silence is better than speech, but song is better than silence. Our tradition knows that in times of trauma, we need the space and the breath of song to move our minds away from the heaviness that we are trying to hold, to open our hearts and let us rest for just a moment for what, from what we are trying to handle. We know that from the words that we read this week in our Torah portion that begins with a simple sentence. This was the life of Sarah. Sarah lived for these many years. Now that's an interesting sentence because what the Torah is trying to tell us is that Sarah has died. And it is time for Abraham to bury her. This is a rather abrupt sentence in our Torah because the last thing we read from just last week was the very end of the binding of Isaac. And so we move immediately from the binding of Isaac to the death of Sarah. Once Abraham goes up that mountain with his son, we never hear from Sarah again. There are many rabbinic traditions, midrashim, stories that fill in the blanks of what is happening in our Torah portion that tell us that so heartbroken was Sarah at the trauma of even hearing about the possibility that Abraham would sacrifice their only child, that her only response was silence and death. Silence was better than speech. But song in our tradition breaks through that silence. We know that from the way that we are grappling with our own heaviness at this moment. That there's only so much time that we can yell or argue or sit silently. There has to come a moment where we hold something else. And that is the power of our musical heritage. We have done this. We have used music for hundreds and thousands of years. And most importantly, as you have heard tonight, we have used music by turning to the soundscape all around us the melodies, the ideas of what we hear from outside of our culture and bringing them into our culture, making it ours, making it holy. Everything that you have heard tonight so far, everything is an appropriation of what once was popular music of the time outside of our culture. When we think about the music of our heritage, we are actually remembering the optimism of our ancestors that has allowed us to continue and move forward. We have, for hundreds of years, reached out to the sounds all around us and brought them into our holy spaces to make us feel a little bit less different, a little bit less alienated, and a little bit less alone from everyone around us. 
We use our contemporary soundscape, the music that we hear all around us, to both connect to the outside world and, just as importantly, we also, even in that appropriation, retain some specific musical sounds that connect us to Jews around the world. Anytime we reach out and grab something from 20th century German art music, we make it a little Jewish when we sing it. We maybe change a little note here or there so that it doesn't just sound like what we hear in the concert hall. It sounds mostly like what we hear in the concert hall with a little bit of Jewish flavor. It is theirs and it is ours. It is everywhere and it is just for us. It is a little bit of what we hear all the time and a little bit special because it's only heard in our Jewish community. This music then is our connector and our conduit. It keeps us moving. It keeps us whole. It helps us process what is going on around us. Every composer that we heard tonight from Louis Lewandowski that in the 19th century Germany to Sulzer in 19th century Austria to Fried and Davidson and Friedman and Richards and as we move forward and forward in time, every one of them turned to the influences around them and said, let me make it mine. And so what we know is that at this moment in time, when we are facing trauma in many places all around us, and we are questioning who we are and where do we belong, it's essential that we remember that it has been the music that has guided us all along and helped us remember our identity just a little bit stronger, with a little bit of comfort, and with a little bit of a push to, we are everywhere. We are part of where we live now and part of who we have always been, connected back generation to generation to generation. And what we know, most importantly, and as you will see as we move through the rest of the service this evening, is that if we are to stay true to the idea that the music is our comfort and our connector, it cannot freeze. It cannot stay in exactly one moment in time. It can nod to and remind us of and lovingly embrace the past. But if, if we are really to remain and retain and maintain spiritually healthy, if we are really to stay true to the idea that it is the music that helps us move forward and process everything that we need, then we have to embrace the sense of ever-evolving connection. Because if we stay exactly the same, then the point of the music that connects us to the soundscape of everywhere no longer serves its purpose and no longer holds its power. We reach out to it for comfort. We bring it with us as we move forward. But if we are to take seriously the combination of the idea of heritage and harmony at one, we must love the past and turn with great hope toward the future. And so on this night, 
as we lift up the absolutely amazing and powerful and profound sounds that have shaped this community for hundreds of years, we say thank you to our musical tradition. We express our gratitude for having been held by it for so long. And we hope that we can take all of that energy and love and bring it with us as we explore the next generation of what it means to take our soundscape, make it ours, and help it keep us whole. Shabbat Shalom.